Welcome back everybody. You want to get into the long range game but you really don't want to pay those TBS prices? I think I got a solution for you. The FR Sky R9M, the R9 Slim Receiver, and the R9 Mini Receiver. Break it down, compare it to the long running TBS Crossfire. I'll let you know what I think. What I have here is a couple of the 915 megahertz radio transmitters and receivers. Uh, this stuff here, pretty uh, everybody should be pretty familiar with the TBS Crossfire system. This is the uh, this is the Chris Crossfire Micro TX. It's uh, 915 megahertz and 868 megahertz for you uh, people across the pond, and uh, also works for the people in the U.S. And this one's power limited. Uh, to 100 milliwatts so you have two options 10 milliwatts or 100 milliwatts and this is the TBS Crossfire Micro V2 receiver uh, with the optional Immortal T antenna uh, pretty neat tiny little package and I've been using this for I'd say about six months and I haven't had a fail safe since I started using this stuff and uh, it'll, it seems like it'll outrun my VTX pretty much any and every time. But this stuff's kind of expensive, and uh, it, it, it's quite a chunk of change to get into the game to start using this. And then if you want to talk about the bigger Crossfire, the, the one that goes up to a whopping 2 watts, that's even more money. So, move that aside. Is this guy. This is built by... FR Sky, it's their R9M transmitter module. Comes with the long little rubber ducky dipole antenna. Uh, there was a, a period in time where they were they were shipping with an antenna that looked like this guy, which we all know that's 2.4 gigahertz, and that doesn't work not with 900 megs. So I think that was just oversight on their part. They uh, they are shipping with the big rubber ducky antenna. So that that problem's all cleared up. I'm going to take this off of here just to get out of the way. Okay. So there's the the transmitter module, receiver modules. There's a couple different options out there. There's a big monster guy with two antennas that I don't know, that's some fixed wing stuff. I'm all rotary wing here. Uh, this is the R9 Slim, which is very similar in form and function to the Crossfire Micro V2. It's a little bit wider and a bit shorter. Uh, has basically the same functions. Uh, has um, S port, um, and it supports redundancy, so you can have more than one receiver connected. Uh, not really, not really too big of a feature for us in the mini quad game, but it, you know, it's something. This one also has uh, six other output channels for, say, running a servo, or um, it uses a standard I IPEX connector, so you can install one of the Immortal T's, which uh, I highly recommend because these things are these things are great. They're they're not indestructible because I've killed a few of them, but they're pretty darn indestructible, and uh, you know it's a lot easier to get good RF performance out of something that's pretty much rigid rather than this this style antenna. So that's the that's the R9 Slim. Uh, it's a great little receiver. Uh, it's light, small package. You know, it's kind of what you expect. But just recently, they came out with the R9 mini receiver and this guy is teeny tiny it's about the size actually it's smaller than a rxsr it's a little bit smaller than the crossfire nano receiver it as far as the layout and the look and everything it's 
almost identical to the Crossfire Nano Receiver, except for it's just a little bit smaller, and it's obviously it's made by FR Sky. Um, doesn't come with any pin headers attached to it, but it does come with uh, pin headers and a connector if you want to go that route. But for us mini quad guys, um, you know, direct solder, that's the way to do it. So the other nice thing about this one is it does support F port. And if you haven't heard about F port, it's basically your signal wire and your telemetry wire all in one. So as far as your connections to the quad, you've got power, ground, and your F port wire. And that can do servos. I'm not really sure. I'm pretty sure you can though. And again, regular IPEX tiny. So let's talk uh, pros and cons between the two. So this one limited to 10 milliwatts output power. That's it. This one will go up to a whopping one watt and it's adaptive just like this. So it'll automatically boost the power as it, as it's required. So you're not always using one watt. This doesn't output the two watts that the big brother to this guy does, but hey, I don't really need to go to the moon with my mini quad. All right, I'll put those aside. Uh, another nice little feature is it does have a XT30 connections for a external uh, battery pack. This will go all the way up to one watt without needing external power. Uh, it just has this on there so you can hook up external LiPo, kind of like this guy. So it'll use this rather than your transmitter battery. So, you know, why burn up the extra uh, milliamps if you don't have to? Um, by the way, 2S only. Do not put a 3S on there. You will you'll cook it. Put that aside. Let's go to the receivers. So, again, pretty much the same size package. You, know, you, can, you can see the difference here. Um, it's not a lot of difference, but, you know, a little bit. Uh, again, antennas are interchangeable, the best of my knowledge, and they seem to perform the same either way. Um, this guy, $45. $45. Bucks. This one, $25. There's also another one. It's the R9 Slim Plus, which has two sets of antennas coming out of it. Uh, kind of overkill for the mini quad world. But if you're doing a wing, yeah, that might be not, might not be bad. This also does redundancy, so you can have two receivers on the same model. One of them loses uh, reception, the other one kicks in, you know, you don't fall out of the sky. So big price difference there, $45 versus $25. Pretty much the same thing. Oh, and by the way, these don't come with the Immortal T. This, that's, that's extra. And then we've got the mini R9 receiver, and I've got a few Nano RXs on some of my other models. Um, and you know, the Nano RX and the mini RX, or the R9 mini, they're basically the same. Same footprint for basic basic dimensions are the same. This is a little bit smaller, not much. The uh, Nano RX is $40. This guy, 10 bucks, $10. How can you go wrong, right? As long as this performs as good as this, I don't know if I'd want this anymore. And so it's kind of going to kind of going to be up to you. I did some range testing on this, uh, pretty rudimentary, and uh, we'll go over that here in a second. Um, but you know, these are a little hard to find. If you if you go online, you want to buy one right now, you're probably going to pay a hundred bucks for it because people are gouging the crap out of everybody for them. But if you search around and you look and you're patient, you can get these for a little under 50 bucks. Okay, so shop around. Uh, don't buy the first thing that pops up because you may be overpaying. But if you got to have it, they're there, but you overpay. These, you can get these pretty much all day, any day. Uh, there is a guy on uh, YouTube who has a couple hacks to get, I think, 250 milliwatts out of this, which I've seen a couple reviews, and that's pretty promising. All right, so I'm going to briefly describe my testing rig. So I've got a regular 9-gram uh, servo with a flag on it that will let me know when I had a fail-safe. I have uh, a USB power bank hooked up to uh, one of these programmers, which outputs 5 volts, because that's what these run off of. That 
is then connected to my receiver, like so. And then my receiver connects here and connects to my servo, like so. So when I turn on my power brick, there we go. I got five volts to my receiver. which is connected to the servo here, which is, it's on my throttle, uh, throttle stick on my Tyrannus. So that's no throttle, that's full throttle. So in the event of a fail safe, I'll go ahead and turn the transmitter off now. And three, two, one, fail safe, there you go. That was my indicator while I had this sitting on my dashboard driving down the road to let me know that, hey, you had a fail safe. So not super scientific, but Hey, the jank factor is high on this, and that's the way we're gonna roll. Okay, so nothing super scientific here. I'm just gonna have this stuff all on my dashboard with the Immortal T antenna. It's a brand new one, so there shouldn't be any issues there. There's my servo, and I'm gonna mark my GPS here. There's our first one right there. All right, so this time we're gonna change it up a little bit. We're still gonna do the crossfire, except for now we're going to use the diamond antenna. This is brand new, I've never used it. So we'll see how much farther we get, if any. Same receiver. Same place. Okay. Okay. Now we're testing the R9M module with the R9 Slim receiver, and this is just with the, the standard antenna that it comes with, which is exactly like the um, flexible antenna that the Crossfire system comes with. All right. Let's see how this one works out. The uh, transmitter set at 100 milliwatts, just like the Crossfire was. And this one has the uh, the whip antenna that comes with it. Um, there are some reviews out there of it coming with the wrong antenna that looks exactly like the 2.4 gigahertz antenna. Uh, they've they've since fixed that. That was a uh, was definitely a, uh, oversight on their part. But this one comes with the proper length 900 megahertz uh, antenna. System failed, and there we go. Same place. Cranked up to one watt, we'll see how far we can get. This should be interesting. This is 100 milliwatt, uh, 900 megahertz. Failed right about here. And uh, it is a dynamic power, so the transmitter module will up its power output as needed right there okay so R9M with the TBS diamond antenna on one watt and the receiver is the R9 slim with the standard flexible antenna uh, except for I just got it mounted in some antenna tubes just to keep it straight right here's where it failed okay so about the same distance All right, so thoughts on the R9M system by FR Sky. Uh, obviously, the tests weren't very real world. Receivers are in my car, on the dashboard. We're going between the receiver. There's trees, houses, and it, everything was a downhill grade. So at some point, we had the earth between the receiver and the transmitter. But I had consistent results on, 10, on 100 milliwatts between the two systems, and we had farther range 
at one watt. So I could say that based on this rudimentary testing, they're pretty much the same. Uh, obviously, once we put them in the quad, uh, things might change. But for now, I think uh, I think this system might be might be the way to go uh, if you're getting into this. So, who's this for? Well, if you don't have one of these and you want to get into long range stuff, or you just want to not have to worry about fail safes anymore, uh, I would say probably go with this. At this point, uh, I haven't flown it in the quad yet, so still still holding out reservations, but for the price and the bang for the buck that you're going to get is out of this guy. It is a tremendous deal compared to the TBS thing. Few, uh, another thing is if you have a QX7, doesn't work well with this unless you do the inverter hack or you, you cut the baud rate down. This does work. No mods required. Plug it in, go. Downside with it is the firmware updating is not anywhere nearly as user-friendly as the TBS. Uh, it's a lot of programming through the S port on either the backside of your uh, X9D or the S port plug in the bottom of your QX7. Hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, I, I had a fun time making it uh, and testing out new equipment. Uh, these will be going into a quad real soon here so we can get some real world performance data on a quad in the air. But uh, follow me in the next video. We'll, we'll go over how to flash updated firmware to both the transmitter module and the receivers because, you know, always got to get on the newest firmware. All right, thanks for watching. If you like what I'm doing here, like, subscribe, give me the thumbs up. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. I read all of them. It's a small enough channel. I got the time to read them all. Uh, if you have any questions or you want me to see, you want to see me do a different method of testing or anything like that, any questions whatsoever, drop them in there. I'll get back to you. All right. Thanks for watching, and catch you next time.